Continuing on physical chemistry chapter two, we're beginning section nine now. We're gonna do more calculations of first law quantities. So we're gonna find the change in enthalpy, the change of internal energy, Q or W. Now one, let's start with the cyclic process. We already talked about cyclic processes a little bit, and we said that with any a cyclic process, any state function will end up at the same place it started. Now, enthalpy is a state function, therefore the change in enthalpy will be equal to zero. Internal energy is a state function, therefore the change in internal energy is going to be equal to zero. Temperature is a state function, therefore the change in temperature is going to be equal to zero. Volume is a state function, therefore the change in volume is going to be equal to zero. Pressure is a state function, therefore the change in pressure is going to be equal to zero. And that's because enthalpy, internal energy, temperature, volume of pressure are all state functions. Now on the other hand, Q will not be equal to zero and work will not be equal to zero. That's because heat, Q and W are not state functions. Now, for a cyclic process, we write an integral sign with a circle through it. So, and then we'll do like DU. This would be like the cyclic integral of differential of internal energy. So this is the cyclic integral of U. So the cyclic integral of um, U is going to, differential of U is going to be equal to zero for any state function. So like I said, the cyclic integral of du is going to be equal to zero. The cyclic integral of differential volume is going to be equal to zero. Now the cyclic integral of the differential of w, that's going to be the work done, since work is not a state function. Likewise, the cyclic integral of the differential of q is going to be equal to q, since q is not a state function. Now what about a reversible phase change, a constant temperature and constant pressure? Example of a phase change would be like boiling a liquid or melting a solid. That, well, then for the boiling, we have the latent heat of evaporation, and likewise for melting a solid, we have the latent heat of melting. So Q is going to be the latent heat. So Q is going to be greater than zero for melting it, because we're adding the energy, the heat, to melt the, the liquid, melt the solid. On the other hand, going back the other way, taking a liquid and freezing it, Q is going to be zero. The uh, energy is going to be leaving the system to freeze it. Now, latent heat is experimental. In thermodynamics, we have no way to derive it. Now, work is going to be equal to minus P times the change in volume. So delta volume, remember, is proportional to mass over rho, where lowercase m is mass and lowercase rho is density. And the symbol here means proportional to. Now we're talking about solid liquid equilibrium. So the volume of the solid is going to be the mass divided by the density of the solid. And the volume of the liquid is going to be equal to the mass divided by the density of the liquid. Lowercase English s means solid, or print s, and lowercase l cursive means liquid. That way it doesn't look like a 1 or an i or anything. Now the change in enthalpy is going to be the heat um, flow at constant pressure. The change in internal energy is going to be the heat flow at constant pressure plus the work. Now we're going to talk about what about constant pressure heating but with no phase change. Then the temperature can change, right? So work, remember, we're to only talking about reversible work. That's going to be minus the integral from state 1 to state 2 of PdV. So we just get minus P delta V for since it's constant pressure, the P can come out of the integral there. Now for solid or liquid, we're going to have to use um, the change in volume using rows, the change in the densities. Now for a perfect gas, volume, we'll just say, is nRT over P. Remember, from PV equals nRT. So the change in volume is going to be volume 2 minus volume 1, final volume minus initial volume. The change in enthalpy is going to be the heat capacity constant pressure. That's going to be equal to the integral from temperature 1 to temperature 2, of the con heat capacity constant pressure, which is dependent on temperature, with respect to temperature. So writing the heat capacity constant pressure with parentheses like that, we're showing that, yes, it'll change with temperature. Of course, this also depends on the substance and what phase we're in. Uh, liquid water, solid water, and steam, those all have uh, different heat capacities, even though it's the same substance. Now the heat capacity constant pressure that is a constant or um, it could be 
a, written as a function, like CP equals A plus BT, you know, slope y-intercept formula. So it just depends on how much detail you need, how accurate you need to be, and so on. The change in internal energy is going to be the heat capacity at constant pressure plus the work. Now these formulae, or formulas, work as long as the P1 is equal to P2, not just for constant pressure. Now constant um, volume heating, the, the fourth uh, process we're going to look at is constant volume heating, but again with no phase change. Now since volume is constant, delta V is equal to zero, so the work is equal to zero, which means that the change in internal energy is just the heat at constant volume. So we get change in internal energy is the integral from temperature one to temperature two of the heat capacity at constant volume with respect to temperature. That's going to be just the heat at constant volume. So obviously to do that we need to know what the heat capacity at constant volume is. Likewise, the change in enthalpy is going to be the change in internal energy plus the change in pressure volume. Now, um, V is constant, so delta V is going to be equal to zero. So that simplifies to just the change in, 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 change in internal energy plus volume times the change in pressure. Now remember, substituting in, we get the change in enthalpy is the change in uh, internal energy plus NR delta T for perfect gas. Now the next uh, process we'll talk about is a perfect gas change of state. So we'll just start with any arbitrary temperature and volume and we'll end up with some other temperature and volume. So du is going to be equal to CV dt for a perfect gas. So the change in internal energy is going to be the integral from temperature 1 to temperature 2 of the heat capacity constant volume with respect to temperature. The differential enthalpy is going to be the heat capacity constant pressure with respect to temperature. So we get delta H is equal to the integral from temperature 1 to temperature 2 of the heat capacity at constant pressure dt. So for reversible process we get work is equal to minus the integral from state 1 to state 2 of PdV. So work is equal to, using PV goals NRT, we'll get minus NR integral temperature over volume dv. It should be from state 1 to state 2 obviously. Kind of redundant, but anyway. The, but this is a line integral. It's path dependent. And also neither temperature nor volume is constant in this case. Therefore, we need to know temperature as a function of volume. The reason we need to know that is because we're integrating with respect to volume. So we need an equation of state. Now the sixth process we'll talk about then, what if we have a reversible isothermal process in a perfect gas? Well remember U is a function of temperature only, so delta U is equal to zero because it's isothermal. Isothermal means constant temperature. Enthalpy is also a function of temperature only for a perfect gas, therefore delta H is equal to zero. Now work is of course going to be the integral from state 1 to state 2 of PdV. That's going to be equal to minus nRT natural log of V2 over V1. Therefore, putting the minus sign in and flipping upside down, we could say nRT natural log of V1 over V2. Or we could use Boyle's law and put pressure instead of volume in there. The seventh type that we're going to talk about is um, a reversible adiabatic process in a perfect gas. Adiabatic, remember, Q equals zero. Therefore, delta U, the change in internal energy, is equal to the work. So delta U is equal to integral from temperature 1 to temperature 2 of the heat capacity constant volume with respect to temperature. And delta H is going to be the integral from temperature 1 to temperature 2 of the heat capacity constant pressure with respect to temperature. So we're going to get temperature 2 over temperature 1 is going to be equal to V1 over V2 to the power of R over CVM. And this is assuming that CVM is constant. Now remember we defined gamma before, so we get P1 V1 to the gamma is equal to P2 V2 to the gamma. And remember we defined gamma as CP over CV, or CPM over CVM. And then likewise, um, the eighth type of process we're going to talk about is the adiabatic expansion of perfect gas into a vacuum. Now Q is equal to zero by the definition of adiabatic. Work is equal to zero because we're expanding against no pressure. 
delta U is equal to zero by the first law of thermodynamics. Delta H is going to be delta U plus delta PV, which is using PV equals nRT is delta U plus nR delta T. But delta T, T is equal to zero because U is a function of temperature only, and we said that delta U is equal to zero. And so delta H is also equal to zero. That's the end of chapter two, section nine.